Namo Buddhaya. Welcome back to Monks in the Morning from Colombo Dhamma Friends of Mahameo Nawa. The monks here are so happy to get to spend time with you now. We have a very special show today to talk about something very special that happened recently in one of our monasteries. There was a novice ordination ceremony. Do you know what that means? It's a special event where someone becomes a novice monk. They take the ten precepts and start wearing robes and living as a monk. As a novice monk, they keep all the precepts that you may keep on the opposite day when you observe the eight precepts, but one of those precepts gets divided into two, and they take one more precept, the precept to give up using money. We're going to speak with one of the monks who watched this ceremony, and he'll tell us all about becoming a novice monk. Now let's go for refuge and take the five precepts. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato. Samma sambuddhasse. Namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasse Namo tasse bhagavato arehato samma sambuddhasse Buddhang saranang gacchami Dhammang saranang gacchami Sanghang saranang gacchami Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gacchami Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gacchami Dutiyampi sanghang saranang gacchami Dhatiyampi buddhang saranang gacchami Dhatiyampi dhammang saranang gacchami Dhatiyampi sanghang saranang Gacchami Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu Say after me, I observe the precept of Abstaining from killing beings I observe the precept of Abstaining from stealing. I observe the precept of Abstaining from sexual misconduct. I observe the precept of Abstaining from telling lies. I observe the precept of Abstaining from taking Intoxicating drinks and drugs. With the refuge of the noble triple gem. I observe these precepts. For happiness in this life. For rebirth in heaven. 
to escape from the sufferings of sansara may it help me may it be a blessing sadhu 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 i worship the supreme buddha sadhu sadhu i worship the supreme dhamma sadhu sadhu i worship the supreme sangha sadhu sadhu i worship the supreme sangha sadhu sadhu i worship the supreme triple gem may i have refuge from the supreme buddha being able to recall the supreme dhamma thinking of the maha sangha's virtue who followed the path to find out the four noble truths i show respect to the supreme triple gem may i be blessed in this gautama dispensation i worship i worship the supreme buddha i worship i worship the supreme dhamma i worship i worship the supreme sangha i worship i worship the supreme triple gem namo buddhaya namo buddhaya so today as you can hear i have asked another bante to join us in the studio because i want to find out about something that he did a few days ago that i think that uh you're going to be really interested in so soya hunksa you went to a novice ordination last week didn't you yeah i did i'm guessing that most of the kids listening have never been to an ordination ceremony before and they may not even know what that word means uh ordination yeah. so why don't you uh tell me what what was the purpose of that ceremony yeah sure it is a very rare occurrence like an ordination ceremony it's very rare really does a person get the chance to actually ordain that's as true as a monk in the buddha dispensation and to actually witness such an occasion it's a real great fortune and yes i did get that opportunity last week so it's nice what went on all the things so this happened it didn't happen here in pogahoela where did it happen no normally we would have the ordination ceremonies in pogahoela because after all this is the main monastery but uh, this time around we had it in boat because now boat monastery is a special place because we are building a huge stoop over there the angulimala stoop where we are enshrining both the relics of the buddha and arahant angulimala mm. so it's sort of a blessing for them to get their ordination over there ah. so this time we had the ordination our teacher wanted it wanted to have it over there so that's oh. how it came about very good so in this uh in this novice ordination ceremony there were a group of uh young men who became novice monks so now you and i are bhikkhus uh we're fully ordained monks so uh explain to the kids what the difference is between a novice monk and a a bhikkhu well novice uh, meaning that they are new to this whole thing of living a celibate life living a life as a monk as opposed to being a lay person in okay. their lay life yeah. so first uh, when you become a novice monk you take up 10 precepts and also there are 75 the sekhiyas or training some rules. minor training rules that you have to practice along with the 10 precepts but whereas when you become a higher ordained monk a bhikkhu we say then you have to take up 227 precepts all in all so it's a huge leap 
so that you have to restrain your senses to a greater extent than that a novice monk could. Now, does a novice monk look any different than a high ordained monk? If you look at them, can you no, tell the no, difference? No, you can't. You can't. Say. So they they wear they the look same the robe. Same. Yeah. They shave their heads. They shave their head. They wear the robes. There's nothing you can. No, there's no way of knowing whether he's an ice monk or high order monk just by skin. Mm. So uh, the kids may be wondering: Is there a different way that they should treat a novice monk and a and a regular bhikkhu? No, because uh, your mindset should be like: This is the sangha, mm. the disciples of the Buddha. So you have gone for refuge to the Sangha, the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, and you should have equal respect to all monks. Mm. Okay. So these uh, these young men, now they didn't just come to the to the Asapua that day. They had been living in the monastery for some time, is that yeah, these like the postulants or the ordinance ordination aspirants. Like before they get ordained, they come here, and there's a probation period. Here we don't do not ordain right away, okay. straight out when you come from your lay life. You have to train here at least a minimum of one year. It can be even more. Then the monks would decide whether we whether you are worthy of be, being a monk, being ordained as a monk. So you have to prove your worthiness during which time, like this. Uh, Training period, we say one year or so. Uh, then you take higher precepts, like in your lay life, at most you would have kept five precepts, so you may not have kept the precepts. Once you come here to ordain during the training period, you are supposed to take the eight precepts, which also include the precept of celibacy, which is very important in monk life because the monk life is about being celibate mm -hmm. the whole life throughout. So then you take up higher precepts in this way and you learn and you get accustomed to the monastic life because you are no longer living with the parents, your relatives, that life is behind you. Mm -hmm. So now you are with the monks and you get oriented with what's going on the, in the monastery, the schedule of the monastery. So it's a huge uh, turnaround for them. So it takes time mm -hmm. and uh, to restrain your senses because you can't do anything you did in your lay life watch TV, go go to see movies, or enjoy your friends, all that is behind you. So it's a new life and a more secluded life and your mind needs time to get trained. So that is why we don't straight out ordain anyone. So within this period you are taught the teachings of the Buddha, the monk help you to learn the Dhamma and you learn meditation, you learn to cultivate, foster good qualities, humane qualities. So it's a huge learning curve and it takes time. That is why we have this probation period of one year at least. So you don't just walk into the monastery and have no. to become just like a monk? No, not here. Here okay. it doesn't happen. So uh, you have time to make mistakes? Yeah, you can make, you're free to make mistakes uh -huh. as long as you are, you're learning from your mistakes. Okay. <laughs> That's the case. Because it must be a little difficult like, is it difficult for the monks to have to live with these new people coming in? No, because each and every monk, they've been there in those schools. Ah. Like, they've been ordination aspirants one day, one time. Right. In so they know how it is, and they have compassion, mm -hmm. because everyone comes here, because our teacher, he taught the Dhamma, and he gave us this opportunity to ordain in the Buddha dispensation and don the robes of the Arahants as monks. Mm. So we want others to also have this great opportunity. And we know it is it, we can gain a lot of merit by helping the Supasakas also who come here because they want to free themselves from this woeful sansaric journey, the whole mass of suffering that is there. So there's a lot of compassion mm. and loving kindness. So all are willing to help and uh, we do not alienate them. Like they are like, we are like huge, big, big family, a huge family. Mm -hmm. And they are like our younger brothers. That's how we feel mm -hmm. towards them. So the, the whole process is there to help them? Help them, yeah. Mm -hmm. sad, sad, sad. Oh. So when they live 
here in the monastery, before they become samaneras, novice monks, yeah. they do various jobs like cooking and maintenance and... Yeah, there are a lot of chores, like they mm-hmm. have to... Like they, are, they play a huge role in actually maintaining the monastery and also attending to the monk. And uh, by doing so, they accrue a lot of merit that is in future going to help them in their monk's life. Mm. So it is an opportunity for them to collect a lot of merits. So one day they can look back and feel good, like I attended to monk, monks and I did this and that. Uh, I helped construct the soup. And these things, When once you are a monk, when you reflect upon the, these uh, uh, merits you have done, all the good things you have done, because... In your lay life, you don't get the opportunity to associate monks as closely right. and get involved in these things, these chores and the things you can do together with the monks, mm. with cl- in the, being in a clo- being in the close proximity to the monks. These are rare chances to accrue very, very rare merits. So one day, once you have become a monk, you can reflect upon those things and it's a nice feeling when you reflect, I have done these things. And you feel like, uh, you have that power, the merits to continue a monk life. Mm-hmm. So it's a good thing. Now, are there ever boys or young men who come with the idea to become a novice monk, but then they change their mind and go back home? Well, yeah, it does, it does happen. Like, you think like it is, this is not easy sign us. That's something mm-hmm. anyone should understand because in the teachings it says like to give up the lay life, and uh, ordain as a monk, it's something very difficult. Mm. So it's in the teaching, it's uh, difficult. And to actually love this life as a monk, it's even more difficult. Mm. And then if a person do love this monk's life to actually practice, it's even more difficult. But if you do practice, then there are other results. That's what is in the suttas. So some find it difficult. That is why we do have this probation period. So you can, because you may have huge hopes like to achieve like to ordain this or achieve this and that but during this period then you can get an idea of whether you can really go through this because it's a huge decision in your life so some fall short of the goal and they do leave like it's this all depends on your past merits. Mm-hmm. If you have the merits to ordain in the Buddha's dispensation and live a spiritual life then it's possible. If not, they do go back to the lay life. Mm-hmm. Some, but the majority, they go mm. toward it, get toward it, yeah. And, but the merits that they collected they, while they, they were take, here, they, they take, take that with them, them. Yeah. right? Which must be helpful. It's always a plus point. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, at this ordination ceremony, there were how many, about how many? Well, I, 26, I think. 26? Yeah, I say, yeah. And so, uh, tell me, just in brief, what happens at the ceremony? So they, uh, everyone went to Bowata uh, Monastery, yeah. and they were already wearing white, I guess, and they already had their heads shaved? Yes. Okay, now some little kids have never had their heads shaved before, and they may wonder, does it hurt when you shave your head? Well, uh, actually, no. It doesn't hurt, like... You might think because you, it's not something you are familiar with, mm-hmm. there's ah, no pain. So it doesn't more. hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. Just like a haircut. Just right. like a haircut. Mm. Yeah. So they start out in the ceremony wearing white, yeah. and then what, what happens? Well, Buddha say like it's mandatory for you to have an arms ball to ordain. Mm-hmm. Then you have to have the three robes. Mm-hmm the double robe, the single robe, and also the under robe. Mm-hmm. So these are like the prerequisites for ordination. You should have them. Mm-hmm. So what you do is like there will be the Sangha present there. There will be the there will be the preceptor is there, the teacher is there, and the congregation of monks with the senior monks, of course, they are there. So then uh, first thing you do is you have to give the arms ball and the three robes to the Sangha. You offer it to the Sangha and say, like, out of compassion, please ordain me. Mm. So you ask the Sangha for the ordination. So, and you offer the arms bowl and the robes to the Sangha. So the preceptor on behalf of the Sangha, he accepts okay. the arms bowl and the three robes. Then what happens is, like, you ask the Sangha, now that you, now that you have given them the 
probes and the arms ball to out of compassion ordain you that is when the preceptor on behalf of the sangha he would uh, tie the waistband around your neck loosely mm-hmm. and uh, then have you recite these pali terms that are actually actually reminiscing the 32 foul parts of the body you have to say like kesa loma naka danta tacho that means uh, head hair body hair nails teeth and skin then he'll have you repeat it in reverse that mm-hmm. is skin teeth nails body hair and uh, head hair so basically you are this is like a meditation instruction in short that uh, you have to recollect upon reflect upon that is the initial advice you get like in the time of the buddha just at this moment recite in this pali terms and uh, recollecting upon the foulness of the body many have achieved arahants at this very moment of getting ordained right so right. in this way you receive the robes and the arms bowl and uh, some other monk will escort you out of that place and help you actually don yourself in the mm-hmm. robes mm-hmm. then they are after together with your other fellow monks get get go to ordain with yourself you will enter the hall mm-hmm. and for the first time you will be there in front of the preceptor the teacher and the other senior monks the congregation of monks mm-hmm. as a monk mm-hmm. not as a lay person now you are standing in front of the sangha the preceptor is there the teacher and the, all the senior monks the congregation as a monk yourself don in the new robes and uh, now you are a monk basically mm. then you ask the sangha for the 10 precepts that is when the preceptor will have you go for a few to the triple gem and take the 10 precepts observe the 10 precepts then after that swain answer then you get a new name right i ah, know one thing before that you have to actually accept the precept and teacher Oh right. You get the choice like like you, there are certain pilot stances you have to say mm-hmm. and you accept okay this is my preceptor and this is my teacher. Mm-hmm. Once that is done the teacher our teacher most honorable kri badu nyanananthero loku swami ngase he mm-hmm. would give you a new name. Mm-hmm. And that would be your new name for the rest of your life as a monk. Mm-hmm. So who decides on that name? Do you get to pick your own name or no? like just like you didn't get to pick a name your parents <laughs> pick the name for you right and our parent is now our teacher loko saingas and he would pick a name for you mm. a very beautiful name that is uh, like in line with the monastic order not a lay name but a right a special a special, special pali name. name yeah pali um, with a good meaning right that is fitting of a spiritual life right and i imagine that the that the young men that ordain together they have a real sense of being brothers and family it's there it's natural they are like the whole throughout the monk life yeah it's there but it's also you bond in with the other monks equally sure but still there's a hint of brotherhood there yeah, yeah. always so speaking of uh family so are they ever allowed to see their family again after this yeah it's they can they can the parents can come and uh, we see them at the monastery but rarely you would get the chance to actually go home right that happens many years after that is not recommended like as a novice monk you are not encouraged to do that right. so but the monk the parents can actually visit the monk mm-hmm. that's possible sign mm-hmm. now this time because of the the whole virus thing the families weren't there at the ordination were yeah they? yeah it is in a way yeah, it's sad that the parents didn't get the chance the relatives didn't get the chance like, to see their relative or actually son get mm-hmm. ordained mm-hmm. but uh, when you think of it in the time of the buddha right. that's how it was right there were no relatives parents when they got ordained so this something kind of refreshing ancient... in a way something quite natural maybe yeah yeah nice so now for you to have uh helped out with this ceremony i imagine that's a lot of merit that that you got to collect by yeah so like i would like to share the merits because it's a rare occurrence to actually participate and Absolutely. to see this from your own naked eyes and also 
I was uh, fortunate because I got the chance to train them beforehand, like mm. during the period they were postulants to teach them Dhamma. Mm -hmm. So that is why actually I got the chance to also participate ah. in particular. So I would like to share all the merits that I accrued by actually help them train, learn the teachings of the Buddha and also preparing them for this ordination and actually participating in the event, all the merits mm. with, uh, of course, uh, Swami Nghansi and all the kids who are joining in today mm -hmm. for this Dhamma talk, the discussion. So, so may you, with the power of this merit, uh, realize the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sad, sad, sad. Good afternoon, Swami Hangsa, for uh, sharing this experience with us. It's uh, It was so exciting to see the, the young men getting ready, wearing white together, and yeah. then they all come back wearing orange. And, yeah, uh, it's really something, so it's, yeah. A very happy thing to experience, so. Yeah, well, sir, thank you very much, Merit, for giving me the opportunity, and hopefully by listening to this uh, this discussion, one day, maybe if some of you know the kids, yeah, might yeah. get ordained. You or never know. <laughs> might have the chance to see a ceremony like this. Yeah, at least, yeah. But maybe even might one day uh, shave their heads and, and wear orange robes themselves. Yeah, anything can happen. Very good. So, Namo Buddhai. Namo Buddhai. I'm so happy that we were able to spend time together today. We hope that you learned something new, and we really hope that you can use what you learned as you go about the rest of your day. Today, we can rejoice in all the merit that the Bhante who joined us today collected by watching and helping with this ordination ceremony. And we can also rejoice in all the merit that we've collected by learning about this very special occasion. So, when we collect merit like this, we like to share this merit with others, that others are also happy thinking about these wholesome actions. So, may our teacher, Lokaswanya Hunksa, may all heavenly beings, may our parents, our relatives, our teachers, our friends, may they all rejoice in this merit. And may they soon experience for themselves the supreme bliss of Nibbana in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya.